questions to ask and methods by which to get the answers, we will continue. Oh, well, Dr. Sabin, do you think that uh, there is any possibility now that uh, in uh, the near future, in future years, in the near future years, that we may be able to eliminate cancer? Maybe, but I don't see that anyone at this time can say just when. Again, the only thing we know is that there's work to be done, and we always live in hope that the work will bring the means for control. Thank you, Dr. Dr. Holly, can you tell us what is the significance of uh, your work in nucleic acid? There's an inherent interest in anything that's done for the first time, and we've determined the chemical structure of nucleic acid for the first time. It has potential significance. It is, it is a step in the direction of understanding the structures of other nucleic acids, more complicated nucleic acids. Some of these nucleic acids carry inherited information in cells. They control the growth and development of cells and organisms. This is one step in the long path to trying to understand all of these very important compounds. Well, what, uh, what practical means uh, would this be applied to? Well, eventually, many steps farther along the path, we would hope to understand the structures of viral nucleic acids, of the structures of nucleic acids that control the growth and development of cells and organisms. Eventually, knowledge of this sort should be helpful in understanding and conquering some of man's most serious diseases. Well, now, this is a long-range goal. Does this mean, uh, for instance, uh, perhaps cancer? Viral diseases and cancer certainly involve nucleic acids. Our understanding is still so far away from being applicable. This is many years in the future. Uh, Dr. Holly, are you still engaged in this nucleic acid research? Yes, we're still working on the chemistry of the nucleic acids we've been working on, the three-dimensional structure, the relation of activity to three-dimensional structure. Hopefully, in years ahead, we'll work on some of the more complicated nucleic acids. Thank you, Dr. Holly. You're Mr. Secretary, there's been a lot of talk of late, as I'm sure you're aware, that uh, your department should be broken up, that it's too, uh, it's too complex with your health and uh, welfare and education, that each one of these should uh, have one department of its own. What about that? Well, I've heard it said that we're a collection of unrelated agencies. I've heard it said that we should be broken up. I thoroughly disagree. I believe that the whole movement of recent years has been toward an interweaving of the objectives of our department rather than a separation. It seems to me that the lessons of dealing with poverty, with juvenile delinquency, with all of these social problems suggest that health and education and welfare are very, very intimately related. And I intend to pursue that line. Well, now, uh, in this field, President Johnson uh, asked for a great deal at this last session of Congress. And so I just wonder, do you have uh, any more goals? Uh, is there more you want? Uh, what's going to happen at this next session? Well, next year will not be as, uh, as vigorous a legislative year as this one, certainly. Uh, it will be another kind of year. But we will have some new ideas and new suggestions. Uh, the problems we're coping with are evolving problems. Uh, they don't stand still. This society doesn't stand still. And we're going to be coming up with some new proposals. Well, uh, Mr. Secretary, there is also a lot of apprehension that the, uh, that the great society might become a welfare society. Now, uh, do you see any possibility of that? I think there's always the hazard in our kind of society that you will over-organize it. I think there's always a problem of maintaining individuality and respect for the individual. It is certainly my most earnest 
concern that this department contribute to the dignity and autonomy of the individual rather than detract from it. And I believe that when you assist people to better health, when you assist pe young people to lift themselves out of ignorance and out of poverty, you're contributing to, the, to, the, uh, to individuality and the strength of the individual. One other thing, about these Lasker Awards themselves, Mr. Secretary, do you uh, award it in the, uh, for education and for uh, in research, uh, health, and, and so on? Uh, what is your evaluation of this? Of the awards of themselves? The awards themselves. <coughs> yes. Well, as you know, if you've read my writings, I believe very strongly in recognition of high performance. I believe that this is the way a society gets ahead by acknowledging its ablest, most talented, most gifted people. This is an example of doing that and just that. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. Okay. Thank you, sir. Good to see you. Dr. DeBecky, um, as head of this, uh, this group that chooses these awards, what would you say, what goes into the selection? Well, of course, uh, the jury, uh, which I was chairman, consists of uh, distinguished men in, uh, in the both clinical and medical sciences. And these are men who are able to evaluate the uh, work of others in the field. The nominations for the award are made from uh, institutions throughout the country, and for that matter, different parts of the world. And they nominate individuals who uh, are considered to have promoted the uh, knowledge and the developments in the, both the basic uh, medical, you might say basic medical research, as well as clinical research. The jury, in evaluating the final award winners, determines uh, the individuals that have made perhaps the most significant contribution in uh, recent years. And this year, the two men selected, uh, I think, would uh, represent, in the minds of uh, certainly most people knowledgeable in the field, as having contributed uh, most significantly to the furtherance of our knowledge, both in uh, clinical medicine as well as in uh, basic research. Uh, doctor, can you tell us a little bit about your own work as uh, head of the President's Commission on Heart Disease and Cancer? Well, the President established this Commission on Heart Disease, Cancer, and Stroke last year. And the Commission, uh, after laboring about nine months, quite intensively, I might say, uh, submitted its report to the President, in which it made uh, 35 specific recommendations. And uh, the President has accepted this report. And during the past year, the President submitted uh, legislative proposals to implement certain of these recommendations for which it was necessary to have legislation. And I'm happy to say that uh, Congress accepted uh, uh, these recommendations and did pass legislation to implement these recommendations. And now we're in the process of uh, of having the uh, administration through its agency, the Public Health Service, uh, develop the plans to further some of these recommendations and put them into actual operation. Thank you, Dr. Becky. Welcome.